All right, Middle Age Boy Guy reacts back again today with another video for you. And in today's video, I have some falling in reverse, and we have I'm Not a Vampire. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do the original I'm Not a Vampire first, and then we are going to do uh, Revamped. It is, I think that's what it's called, Revamped. <coughs> um, so I'm going to format this just like I did Drug and Me is You, uh, where I listened to the original, kind of used that uh, song to break down the lyrics, and then we kind of just enjoyed the uh updated version so, um, and i didn't really have to comment too much on it because the lyrics are were exactly the same so as long as that's going to be the case here that's kind of what you're going to get out of this but without further ado let's just get right into this this is falling in reverse i'm not a vampire and this is the original version so like i said right after we're done with this we'll uh, go ahead and put on revamped So how did you end up in rehab? Tell me a little bit about it. You'll talk to me. Oh, really? Oh. Um, I'm in here. It was a little bit of a misunderstanding. I'm not an addict. I just came here looking for some friends. <laughs> I have no idea why I'm in here. <laughs> All right, so I've never been through a rehab, but, I, you know, you can kind of imagine those different personality types being there. No, I don't here. Ooh. Okay, I'm liking that. <laughs> I'm not a vampire, but sometimes I feel like one. Um, I sleep all day because I hate the sun. Uh, a lot of people, especially younger people, it kind of can fit that description. I know there's a time in my life where I was like a vampire. Um, and then I had kids and I had to start getting up early with them. Where, you know, you would stay up all night partying. You know, go and you, you would live your life basically at night. You'd sleep all day, live your life at night. And, and that's just kind of... What you do when you're young and, and out partying all the time. Hands are, are, my body's always aching, my hands are always shaking, and, and in the darkness is where I feed. Okay, so that's that's interesting. Um, so is is that a metaphor for him, kind of like living in darkness in his demons, and you know that's where he's spending his time, so that's where he's feeding. Okay, that's um, kind of you know he his addiction. What he was addicted, right? He was uh, heroin, I believe. So is is that what he's kind of referencing there, or is he? More just saying, you know, the party lifestyle is um, kind of what does it for him. Uh, interesting. Not sure yet. Let's let's keep going. <laughs> what did he say? Hold on. He can lower any woman that he wants to in his bed. <laughs> <coughs> ah, the life of a rock star, I guess. Um, there was another point I wanted to make. Hold on, I lost it though. Okay, so that's that's what I wanted to say. Where the the hands are shaking and the body's aching, that could be like a withdrawal. I would assume. Uh, is maybe what he's referencing there especially when he's saying like in the darkness is where he feeds okay so the uh the withdrawals and then he needs to feed on his demons he needs to do the the thing that you know he struggles with he needs to accept his demon for right now and, and do the drugs i think i don't know i think that's kind of what he's saying though Huh. 
Whiskey seems to be his holy water. All right, so this is, I mean, this is like a whole, like, this is his party lifestyle that he is he's talking about, you know? Bedding down different women, you know, living at night at, at the party scene, um, and, and doing drugs, okay? Uh, giving in to his demons. I think that's how I wanted to put it earlier, and I was just fumbling around with words. Uh, but, like, yeah, giving in to his dark side and his demons. <laughs> Mothers better lock your doors and hide your daughters, all right? Because Ronnie's coming for them. He can lower them all into his bed if he wants. He's already told you that. I can feel it in my bones coursing through my veins. Like, how did I become so cold? That could literally be, um, that, that could be a reference to shooting heroin. Um, could be. I, I, I think that's where I'm going with that because, you know, you're shooting it in your veins, feel it in your bones, and you get the, the, the wave of euphoria coming over you just kind of, yeah, you know, I've never done heroin, so I don't know if it makes it cold, but, you know. I don't know. We'll see. Alright, I'll let me go back a little bit. Um, I have to assume this is his, a dr his drug addiction. I have to assume that everything points that direction. And I don't know if I'm just one track mind on that because I know of his past. See, sometimes I wish I didn't know the backstories because I think it might kind of pigeon me whole, pigeon, pigeon me whole, pigeon hole me, pigeon hole me into an interpretation. But uh, I, I think we're okay with this. I think, I think we're doing okay. For goodness sake, where is my self-control? Okay, so like you, you drug addicts would always want to, you know, they don't want to do it sometimes. They're trying to stop or whatever, and they just cannot help themselves. It's an addiction. If home is where my heart is, when my heart has lost something. Hold on. Heart, the heart has lost its home or something like that. So if home is where the heart is, my heart has lost its home. Essentially, maybe that's what he said there. I can't quite pick out that last word. But I think that's what he's going to kind of be going with there. He's not a zombie, but he feels like one today. He's peeing in a cup there for his urine sample. He feels comatose. Uh. <laughs> oh, Alright, so... I, um, I'm an x-ray tech as a, as a career, and so I, you know, work in hospitals, and I see, you know, I deal with nasty stuff all the time. You, you get better with the throw up, but you never get over that one completely, man. I could do the poop, I could do the pee, I could do blood and guts, and the throw up still, I have to choke back gagging. It's just, it's awful. You know, I've held buckets for people while they've thrown up in it. It's just, uh, uh. <laughs> Hold on, I need a second. Uh, all right. Good. 
I think that confirms it. I think that confirms it right there. All right, yeah, and he's talking about throwing up, a set, I would assume, from withdrawals, um, feeling like a zombie and comatose. So, hey, is this kind of like him going through... Yes, yes it is. This is him going through rehab. This song is him going through rehab and, and the different stages of it. Right? Am I right? I think I'm right. I think I'm right. <laughs> Daddy should have never raised me on Black Sabbath, you know. Listening to that heavy metal, you know, it uh it definitely influenced Ronnie. Yeah, this is definitely his struggle with rehabs and relapsing and going through withdrawals and everything. Yes, absolutely. My, my heart has lost all hope. If home is where the heart is, then my heart has lost all hope. Okay, Ronnie, we got you, man. Maybe. Now it didn't sound like that the second time. <laughs> Woo! Damn! Oh! You hear that drum in the background? That's double basing, right? I am not a musician. I my Some of my friends were musicians. And the the one time my, my buddy was in a band and they needed to find a drummer who could double bass. And apparently it's hard. And there's not a ton of them out there, uh, at least at the local level around here. So, you know, that brrr that you're hearing from the drums is impressive. Going to hell, taking you with me. <laughs> all right, so he's going to hell. And he's going to take you with him. All right, so don't don't you know associate with him at this point because you know he's not going places that you would necessarily want to go, and he's reckless about it. So he's going to drag you down into that hell with him. And the why when did I get so cold? That might also just be referencing um, him not caring about the addiction, him not uh, you know him relapsing, and you know just being concerned with the next high, not necessarily his well-being or the well-being of people around him and how other people are affected by his actions. Could be that. Could be that. Yeah, lost his, lost all hope. Yep. What's up, bud? Talk, I can't hear you. Oh, you found that other one? Going outside? Yeah. All right. All right, be good. All right, let's continue. Uh, I mean, I guess it may be the hair thing or what, I'm not sure, but, you know, <laughs> we, we kind of 
trying to create. We are cut from the same paisley cloth. I don't get Oh. <laughs> Good friends. You know, we were sillies back in prison. I think Ronnie's kind of an asshole. He's a, he's a party animal. You've had a good time. You know that. <sighs> and you know something? God, when all the little babies come down the ramp, he stamps the ones that are, are his precious little special babies. And Ronnie's got the, the cleft. Well, as soon as I saw that, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Okay, so there's that one. Um, that, that song's good. It's a good song. I like the, I like everything about that pretty much. Um, let's hear Revamped now, though. You can find it. Or I'm not a vampire revamped. Okay, here we go. Oh, I already had it up. Hold on. I already have it up. God, I already did that. Hold on. Let's see. Yep, we can see it on the screen. All right, here we go. I said, so we're all, we shouldn't have to spend uh, time breaking this part down, obviously, because I'm assuming it's going to be the same lyrics as the other one, just like Drug and Me is reimagined was. So let's go. Again, he's going to start with piano in this one. I love the piano in um, Reimagined. Hmm. Okay, so it's following the same kind of auditory sound. Um, that's the word I'm looking for. It, you know, the, the tempo and like the, the tempo, the... Um, Inflections of his voice are the same. The tempo is a little bit different. If that's the proper terminology, I'm not a musician, so I'm just, you know, using words here to try to best describe what I'm talking about. Oh, what's this like violin? That violin and the piano, or you know, some sort of string instrument that's not a guitar going on there, whether it's a violin, cello, whatever. All right, um, but the violin with piano, oh, it's just it's piano to me is one of the um most beautiful instruments especially with, with modern music it's like to put raps and, and rock songs over piano is awesome it always sounds good not always but most of the time it sounds good um and then violin is so underrated violin in songs is amazing amazing and and they're not used enough Yeah, when he says that, how did I become so cold? I do believe that he's referring to, you know, like he doesn't care about, you know, what his actions are doing to people around him. Let's we'll throw that in there. Cause I, I think that's, I think that's where he's going with there. Oh. oh, oh, it's epic. Oh. 
This voice. The range of his voice is amazing, man. Like, he, you know, I'm, I'm sure I've said this, uh, especially uh, Drug and Me is reimagined. Like, his voice in that song is just beautiful. And, like, the, the how high and low he can go, like, the range he has is impressive. And then the emotion when he's singing these songs, too. Okay, so this is a little different. Is this this wasn't in the first one? So let's let's stop here. Let's um, let's see what's going on here. Hold on, I eh, want the world to believe. Oh. I just want the world to believe I'm not a vampire. Hold on, what's going on? Or right, I'm a vampire. There's a lot going on there with, like, the vocals. I cannot, like, catch it. I could probably sit here and back it up another ten times and we'll get it all, but... Um, it basically, you're saying, like, he's a vampire, right? I think it's right there. So is that like a relapse? Is that like um like uh the imagery there, like him relapsing? I think, maybe. I, that's what I'm going with because I feel that's what this song is about. So I think that little section right there that we just saw with him, um, feeding off of that maid or whoever that was, was symbolistic or a symbolism of him, um, relapsing and, and going back down the old heroin path there. <laughs> This is epic, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's oh. No good. Okay, so if I am sticking with the rehab and the relapsing interpretation, this to me is somebody he was doing heroin with who got clean. So to him, that person was dead. And then he needs to bring her back. I mean, nobody wants to live as a vampire, right? So that's not necessarily a good thing. He is reincarnating her, bringing her back to life, but in a form that, you know, isn't good, isn't natural. So is this him, like, re-hooking his friend on heroin? 
I don't know. I don't know. I could be totally off. It could be nothing about that. That's what I feel this is symbolizing right here, though. Wow. 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 <laughs> oh, Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie. You're giving me goosebumps, man. You're, you're sending chills all the way down my spine, dude. This is insane. Fucking amazing, man. Wow. The visuals. The ending of that, that was just freaking epic. Is that that's it, right? Alright. Wow. That was amazing. That was amazing. Um I have goosebumps. Like I said, I feel like that. So his whole struggle with rehab and relapsing. And at the end, maybe the symbolism of him, you know, basically being dragged, kicking and screaming uh, to kill off the vampire in him, the, the heroin addict, maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys, um, I know the Falling in Reverse fans will let me know. Okay, you guys will let me know if I am off on anything. But, yep, I feel like that. I feel like that was an okay... I feel like that's an okay interpretation. I feel like I got it. Uh, that'll do it, though. I guess middle-aged white guy reacts is out. Peace.